Hello. Hi, everybody. Happy to see you guys again. Um, as we mentioned yesterday, we are completely remote. And so our lessons are going to be looking a little bit different, exactly like this now. So um, if you missed our video yesterday, we talked about um, video etiquette and what that looks like. If you'll notice on our screen right now, all of our participants should have their muted button. Um, and just the speaker is talking right now, which is me. So um, I have a lot of questions for everyone who's here, so I'll be calling on them as we go. But we're gonna try to practice our best etiquette as well. Okay, so today is all about writing a letter to your future self. This is actually a project that me and Karosh um, completed a, a couple of weeks ago, maybe actually now even months, right? We did it at the beginning of the school year, now that I think about it. Um, yeah. So, yes. <laughs> So we're writing a letter to our future self, um, and then we actually are even going to create a time capsule. So for Karosh's example, he actually used a physical time capsule, which I'm gonna link below. Um, there's a lot that you can buy on Amazon. Some are kind of expensive, some are a little bit cheaper, um, but I'm also gonna leave the option for reading your future self letter in a video format that you can watch later. So kind of like a virtual, letter a virtual time capsule right yeah. Once so you finish the project and you've written your letter you record you talk uh, you record you reading it and then you like open it like in 10 years or so yeah exactly so you open it later right so we're going to talk about what the project looks like i'm also going to link the instructions below so it's going to walk you through each and every step um, but we're going to talk about our experience with writing our future letters, as well as looking at our time capsules. Looks like Mandana has a question. What's up? Well, I had a comment to say that, like, an example of it is, um, so when I was in third grade, we did this where we had a little string and we measured ourselves with the string uh -huh. and we put it in this envelope. And at the and at the end of the year. Um, of third grade, we would look at it and see how much taller we got. That's that's cool. Mandy, you're muted. Am I back? <laughs> yeah, you're back. Sorry, I was trying to show etiquette because Mandano is talking. I love that example. So you would look back on it, right? And that's what a time capsule kind of is. So before we even get started writing our letters, which are awesome, Karosh wrote an awesome letter to himself. He even created a time capsule that he buried already. Okay, so he's done the entire project. But before we do that, there's a few vocabulary words we need to get through so that you guys understand what we're doing and what we're learning today. And Danielle has those, those words for us. All right, so I'm gonna take that over and we're gonna talk about these vocabulary words one at a time. The first one is your future self. It's the person that you hope to be in many years from now. And it's a glimpse of like your ideal future who you are in the future and what you're going to be doing in your life. Um, it is important to remember that your future self is your ideal self and what that looks like is anything that you hope to be. So you can aim big on this, um, whatever dreams you wish to accomplish in the future, these are your best self moments and the things that you are actually completing in your life. Um, so really aim high because it's the person you want to become and who you want to be in the future. So Karosh, when you did this project, how old were you when you wrote your letter to your future self? How old are you in that letter? I was right, I think 14. Like as I, I think it was either 13 or 14, but most likely 14 because still 14. It was really recently. Okay. So um, you wrote it when you were 14 and then how old were you in that letter? Uh, I was writing it to myself it, at 28, so I wrote, because 28 is my favorite number, my username is Chris2828, like, <laughs> um, so I wrote the letter to myself for when I'm 28, uh, to open it then, yeah. Okay, cool, so what are some of the things that you actually told your future self in your letter that you wrote? Um, I told him, I, I, I told me about like I also wrote some like stuff like that, like me, you, I tried to purposely confuse them just for comedic purpose. But um, I told myself about what things are happening now, what things I think will happen in the future. Like if I were to write this letter at the current moment right now, I'd probably mention something about the scenario going around, how everyone has to stay at home, you know, in the letter. 
and I also wrote uh, some like thoughts that I had about the future, what the future might be. And um, in the time capsule itself, if you're making a physical one, not just like reading it off into a video or a uh, letter, I put some like items that uh, like, I put some items that my future self would recognize. That's cool. So let's go on to our second thing. Karosh kind of introduced it, but our second vocabulary word is a time capsule. So what is a time capsule? Mandy kind of gave us an example of that where you could have a virtual time cap capsule where you record your letter to your future self um, or you take pictures and you put all of these together for you to open in a certain amount of time. Maybe you share that on your Google Drive and hope you have access to it 10 years from now or whenever you're going to open it. But we did a physical time capsule. And a time capsule in that sense is where you put a lot of items and then you bury that physical time capsule in the ground somewhere and then you dig it up later at that time. Now the trick is you have to remember A, where you put it and B, to actually dig it up. So Karosha's 28 year old self is gonna have to remember, hey, this is where I put this and then um, yeah, these that That's are... probably gonna be harder than the actual time capsule itself, just finding it when I'm 28 or remembering. That's that's right. So it can include items like Karosh said he put some of his favorite things in there. It could also represent the period of your life that you're in now. So maybe his time capsule now might look different than it did a couple of months ago. You never know. Um, other things that you could include in there are articles from history or the time period you're currently living in. So one of the important things, though, is you probably don't want to put some family heirloom that's really important to you in a time capsule in case you um, don't find it again or someone else um, finds it. You don't want to lose this stuff. That's right. So really, you could put anything that's important to you in there. So, Karosh, do you want to give us some examples of the things that you put in your physical time capsule? Well, one of the things I put into my time capsule um, it had two purposes uh, for being in my time capsule. So it was a flip phone. And the meaning this flip phone had was my mom one summer, like she was mad at me. So she took my phone away and she gave me a flip phone for the entire summer, which was torture. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was more funny, but uh, it wasn't funny when she gave it to me. But yeah, I had this flip phone for the summer. And so what I did was to remember that moment, I put the flip phone in the time capsule, which does two things. It reminds my 28 year old self about when I got a flip phone for a summer. And it also makes sure my mom cannot give me that flip phone again. Yeah, that's super funny. I totally remember watching you try to text on that and um, I got some good laughs out of it. Yeah, it had one of those like things where you had to like, to get one letter. <laughs> yeah, that T9 texting, right? All right, so where did you bury your time capsule and why did you choose to bury it there? And maybe don't tell us the exact location because you don't want anyone to steal the treasures that you put underground. Um, well, I, I just put it in my backyard, just somewhere where I'd remember, you know, like not, well, not somewhere where I'd maybe remember when I'm 28, but like it, it's a simple location, so I'm not looking forever. It doesn't have that much meaning behind the spot. Just somewhere okay. early where my mom wouldn't want to plant a tree. Ah, oh, perfect. All right, so make sure you take that into account that if you're going to bury it in your yard somewhere um, or on public land, that that is actually a place that you could bury that time capsule. So there might be some different things about it. And we're going to actually link a video below on the history of time capsules and a worksheet that goes along with that video. So make sure you go ahead and check that out, complete it, take notes on that, and then you'll learn a little bit more behind that. Mandy, do you have something to add? Yeah, I did. So along with all the items that you're including in your time capsule, Karosh had several. I think he had like over 15 items, small things that he put in there that were um, things that he wanted to remember, right? Yeah, we um, had to get a really big time capsule just because it it almost didn't fit all of the items. Yeah, his was pretty big. Like, it was pretty big. Um, but the main yeah, thing is that the project that we're doing beforehand is... Is my camera over here? I have some pops. 
Uh, I put one of those, I put an empty box. I tried to put an empty box in, but it was too big. It couldn't fit in the time capsule. So we had to pull one of those out. <laughs> yeah. So keep that in mind when you're picking your items, you might want to pick your capsule first. Maybe that's a mistake that we made, right? We were like, uh, ugh. Right, so maybe pick your your capsule first if you're going to go the physical route instead of right, doing a video. But the main thing that I wanted to add was that make sure that you also include the letter to your future self in there. Um, that's kind of the biggest point of this, and it is you know the writing component of this lesson. So make sure you include that in there because you're going to read it when you are 28 years old, right? So that is the main thing that needs to go in your time capsule. Yeah, even yeah and how funny. Like writing with me, like I I don't like writing, but. I, I wouldn't want to open a time capsule in a, after like 14 more years and just like only get some items that I have no idea what this means. You no, know, I wrote about what I'm thinking in the time capsule too. Yep, that sounds good. All right, so let's go to our last vocabulary word for today. It's called narrative writing. And narrative writing is a spoken or a written account in this case of events that are just connected together. And these are the events or story, how you view it as a person. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and Mandy's gonna go into more detail, especially when we're talking about the assignment. But um, Mondana, do you have an example of um, narrative writing? Well, narrative writing is a story of your perspective. So. You could write about your first day of school or the first friend you made or something that like um, is about it that happened to you that's in your perspective. Like, so your perspective of your first day of school. So how did your first day of school go? That's your, uh, you, get to, uh, you get to put your perspective in the story that you're writing and that's narrative writing. Very good. So basically, it's how you are viewing a situation or you are viewing life, right? So doing yeah. a virtual classroom, you could write a narrative story on how you feel about that and all of the things that you're going through. That would count, right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, that's our vocabulary wrap up for today. So here we go. Awesome. Yeah, that was a really great explanation of all those vocabulary words and really good examples, Mondana, of what it looks like to write a narrative story, right? So all narrative stories are events, right? So here's the thing. When we are thinking about the way that we create a story in our minds, it's actually something that happens all day long every day, right? We are telling ourselves things every single day. We are in control if those things are positive or negative or what it is that we're going to create our story to be. So that's why I really actually love this project is because it's all about creating your own story, right? And we story things in ourselves all the time. We have our own narration in our head. We might be saying things like um, some positive affirmations. I can do this. I'm smart. Here's how I know why. I um, work hard every day. I study. I listen to my teacher. Things like that. That's building a story in your head of the person that you are, right? So that's why I actually really love this one because you're talking to your future self and you're creating a narration for them in your actual writing, which is awesome. Um, okay, so behind me, I have a couple steps. I know they're hard to read, um, but in linked below are all of the instructions as well. So no worries if you can't see it. If you want to write it down as I go, if that's easier for you, then you can do that as well. Um, but in our letter to our future selves, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind. The first thing is that you need to choose your age, right? So for Karosh, he chose age 28. I know that for the story that Mondana is about to write, which she is going to also do this project a little bit later, she is writing, <laughs> there she is, she is going to write to her 16-year-old self. She told me that today. So she's going to be sharing some things with us that she might want to tell her 16-year-old self um, Mondana, are there some things you want to share with us about what you want to say to your 16 year old self? Well, I wanted to, so right now I'm 10 and when I was younger, I don't remember a lot about what I used to like and everything. Like, like I, I know some things that I used to like when I was a little younger, but I don't really remember too well. So I might maybe write to my future self what I liked when I was this age 
and tell that person or me in the future when I'm 16 when I open the capsule to just tell her what I liked because I wanted just I just wanted I was curious just to know what I would like when I was younger so um when I was like four I have no idea what I was interested in because I forgot because it's been six years but um maybe if I write what I like in the letter to my 16 year old self I'll remember because I'll write what I liked I love that. That's a great thing to say to your future self and to include in your letters. Good thinking. Um, so the second thing is create a list of questions for your future self. So Karosh and I actually did this when we created um, our own future self um, letters, which I also participated in. Some of the questions you might see, and I'm also going to link these questions below um, in the worksheet that I'm going to include, but you might ask yourself things like this. What is it that you will have hoped to have accomplished by now, right? Think of the, the accomplishments you want to have accomplished by the time you're 28 or by the time you're 16. You can pick any age, by the way, okay? Second thing is, what would you tell your future self about things you wish for them not to forget? This is actually my favorite one. So we're constantly learning and growing as human beings. We're making mistakes all the time, right? So we are learning and growing from those mistakes each and every day. So what are some things that maybe you've learned already that you don't want to forget, okay? So that's an important one too. And then the last one that we came up with is what do you hope is still important to you when you're older? And do you want your, or do you want, oh, sorry. Do you want to ask yourself any questions about things that are important to you now, right? So we included things like, um, we hope that you, I know that uh, Karosh, and I won't share everything because these are personal, right? But one thing that he had mentioned is that he really hopes that he's still close with his friends and family, right? That's an important value of his now, and he hopes to keep that value from here on out. Oh, the cutest little cat. There's Danielle's cat. I love this. <laughs> okay, so that's step number two is creating a list of questions. We all know when we're doing our own writing that we have different ways of brainstorming. For Karosh and I, we wanted direct questions to answer in our letter. So that's how we went about it. Um, I also have the writing instructions in the link below as well. Um, but I wanted to share just the last part of this, which I think is the best part of it all. Um, where is it? There we go. Okay. So the last part is write your letters and bold major life lessons. Okay. So like I said, we're constantly learning and growing as human beings. There were a lot of things that I put in my letter to my future self that I didn't want to forget that I've already learned. Why relearn it, right? <laughs> like the mistake already happened. I'd rather not relive it. So some things that I said is um, that I bolded in my letter is one thing that I struggle with is that my accomplishments don't define me, right? So I wrote in my letter to my future self, I said, yes, continue to strive, continue to do the best that you can, but what you accomplish doesn't mean that that's the person that you are. I might not reach all of my goals, I hope that I do, and I want to continue to be a driven person, but my biggest thing is that I'll always put my best foot forward. So that's something that I wrote to myself about because it's something that I know is something that I struggle with is, ah, oh, I didn't quite make my mark. Well, did I give my best, my best effort, right? So I wrote about that in my letter. I also said that I want to take more appropriate risks. So personally for me, I, I like to think of everything very planned out and careful, right? Um, but there are some appropriate risks that you can take that can really benefit you, right? So I wrote about that to myself because that's something I personally um, want to work through. I also talked about being completely myself and um, loving myself for the person that I am, right? So I wrote to my future self about that. Um, everybody's is going to look different, but that is one major takeaway from the assignment is to make sure that you bold those life lessons. So my things that are bolded are take risks that are appropriate, um, stay safe, of course, um, but do not tie your accomplishments or do not, please do not tie your worth to your performance. Um, I also talked about, um, oh, I said other people's emotions are not my responsibility, right? Something that I work on. So make sure that you highlight those in your future self letters. Okay, so we are going to move along just a little bit. Um, these are some things that I want you to make sure you're thinking of when you're writing your own future self letters. And I have linked below the writing instructions, 
but I wanted to check in with my students. What are some things that you might want to add um, about this assignment or things that you liked about it, um, struggles you had while completing the assignment, and for Mondana, if you want to chime in, also things that you look forward to when you complete the assignment. Looks like Mondana has her hand raised, so we'll start there. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> also, uh, I was telling her in chat to like, uh, use the participants and raise your hand button, you know? We, we should probably use that when we're muted. Um, click on we'll the participants that. in the bottom and then raise and lower your hand, you know? Okay, that's good thinking. All right, Mondana, your turn. So, um, if so, if there's something that you want to forget and you put it in your time capsule, that's not a good idea. Because if you want to forget it, you're just if, say you do forget it, and then later when it's time for you to open your capsule again and you actually remember to open it, then you realize that you're just like, I wanted to forget this and I put it in my capsule. Why did I do that? So don't put something you want to forget in your capsule because that's a really bad idea and you'll just remember it by the time you open your capsule. I like that point, Mondana, and I want to add, this is all supposed to be positive. Like I mentioned before, we create our own stories in our head, so Mondana made a really good point. You want to read this and look forward to the positive things that you remember from your past as well as the things you want to keep with you. Good point, Mondana. Karosh, do you have anything you want to add about the assignment? Um, no, not really. That's, that's the whole point about the assignment. It, but though, like, like Mondana's point, it's not like an angry letter. You don't want to like write some stuff down that you want to forget about and then, you know, remember it later. Right. So it's all about becoming our best future selves. Like Danielle had mentioned, our future self is our ideal, our best version of ourselves, right? So um, I'm really excited to kind of see what you guys do with these letters. Um, again, they're, they're personal, so make them as personal as you'd like, things that you want to continue to learn and grow from. Um, but yeah, I mean, my future letter, I want to say, was three or four paragraphs long. Um, there's no exact length, um, but you're, if you're a teacher and you're introducing this to your students, you're welcome to put your own parameters around that if you want them to have a certain length. Um, also vary it by grade level, of course, and you can use other brainstorming ideas instead of asking your future self direct questions. There's lots of ways this can be modified, um, but it's by far one of my favorite um, things that I've ever done with Karoche. It was awesome. So I hope yeah, that- Karoche, did you well. have fun? Very much so. I was about to unmute myself, but I, I just realized I was, I was unmuted anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Awesome. So um, I want you guys just to, I want to encourage you to start thinking about that. If you were able to join us for one of our lives, I actually went through a future day fantasy script. Um, and that's actually tied to this as well. If you want to re-listen to that and visit our old uh, YouTube live to, to listen to that, it's the one where we did a guided meditation at the end with our vision boards. If you scroll to the very end of that video, I take you through a guided meditation that takes you 10 years ahead. If that would help you brainstorm, you can re-listen to that as well. Perfect. All so right. make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to upload different content every day. So we're going to be bringing all sorts of different things to you regarding reading, writing, STEM, all of that. So make sure you subscribe. Yes. All right. Everybody unmute so we can say goodbye. Yeah. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to watch your naruto anything well, else to add i think we're okay. good oh something yes mom has something to add okay what is it squishy yeah. Mondana is an artist, if you didn't know. She does awesome paintings on her squishies. Um, she does all sorts of things. So I like that she's featuring that guy in here. <laughs> and that could end up in your time capsule. Oh, yeah. You could. You yeah. could put at the same time. Well, you could probably put a squishy that you've painted in your time capsule. That's a good idea. I yep. love it. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mondana. I love that. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.